Hey everybody, welcome to the Rustic Anchor Woodworks channel. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to build this military retirement shadow box. So stay tuned. So for the shadow box build, you're not going to need a ton of materials. But what you do want to make sure you're doing is using a nice piece of hardwood or a combination of different hardwoods. Uh, so for this shadow box, I'm going to be using uh, walnut, and this happens to measure three quarter. I'm sorry, three and a half inches wide by three quarter inch thick, and it's about a ten foot piece. Also, I'm going to build it using this 18 by 24 inch piece of glass. It's already pre-cut. This is the size of the display I want to build around, so I don't have to mess around with cutting glass or having glass cut. Um, so let's jump in this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rough cut some of this walnut. Um, then I'm going to take it over to my planer, plane it so I get all these imperfections out and it becomes nice and straight. Uh, and then I'm going to cut some miters out of it. So let's jump on in. All right, so I'm going to cut the end off of this first to get me a good, nice starting piece. I'm going to cut two at 26 inches long and two at 20 inches long. Here I'm just running all those pieces through my planer and I got my feed speed set low and I'm barely taking off any material on each pass just so I have no tear out. Uh, next, I'm ripping all my pieces down to two and a half inches. You guys all know how much I love sanding, but you have to do a really good job at it. Otherwise, the end product is going to so turn out bad. So the next step, after I have all my sides sanded, that's not going to be the final sanding. I just want to get the majority of it before I route it because once I have nice edges, I don't want to spend a lot of time sanding it and mess up any of those nice routed edges that I'm going to have. So the next step is I need to put a quarter inch groove where the glass is going to inset. I'm going to do a quarter, I'm sorry, quarter inch deep. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my blade height up to a quarter inch and then I'll set up my fence to where I want it. All right, so I'm going to set it up quarter inch from the inside of the blade, uh, the outside, be careful, you want a quarter inch on the inside of the blade, not the outside of the blade. The idea is, pick your wood, uh, pick what you want showing on the outside, right? So I kind of don't want that knot, for instance, showing on the outside of the shadow box. So I can make that the inside of the shadow box where the foam is going to cover, right? So in this case, I'm going to cut that glass cut out right here on this side okay because I have no imperfections on that side of the wood so really lay this out and be methodical when you're doing this the next step after you have all those uh, cut out for your glass is we need to put that rabbit right here so I have my blade set to a quarter inch high, I didn't touch it. Um, you need to get a sacrificial fence. This was off my old uh, table saw. I got a new one recently. This is like honestly the second time I've used it. The first time I was just setting it up, dialing it in. So this is really the first time I'm building something off of it. Um, so I want to make another one. This one's a little too short for my liking, but it'll work for right now. So you want to get a sacrificial fence and these Miles Craft um, fence clamps. So basically you just rip whatever, however tall your fence is, drill two holes wherever you want to put these clamps on, and you clamp it right to your fence, and it'll be a sacrificial piece, so when you get close to your blade, you're not gonna damage your fence. You can cut your wood and you won't cry about it later, right? Um, so there's a sacrificial fence. I would normally use a dado stack blade for this, but I just want to do it this way to show you you don't necessarily need a dado stack blade to cut a rabbit out. You can do it 
uh, this way if you don't have, you know, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollar uh, dado stack. So um, be mindful of where you're going to cut. We're going to do the opposite end on the inside of these uh, pieces. So my rabbit is going to go right here and I want it a quarter inch deep cut and a quarter inch high. So I can't go off of my fence, but what I can do, take my pocket rule and I can set that cut to a quarter inch and then I'll walk it in. All right, while that is spooling down, all I'm gonna do is walk my fence in towards the blade. I'll probably make three passes on each of these just to knock that whole piece out. After you cut the rabbits out on all four pieces, go ahead and choose a nice router bit and you're gonna route the edge opposite of where the glass is gonna go. And I didn't show it in this video. I took three passes on each of these pieces. So I would highly recommend double checking what the actual cut is of the glass. Because how many times have you gone to one of those box stores and it says it's a certain measurement and you don't get that. So you only have one chance with this nice expensive hundred dollar piece of walnut um, so don't mess it up so this is true this is 18 by 24 they got this one spot on um, so remember i cut a quarter inch deep um, recess in each one of those pieces so each side um, the glass is going to fit in a quarter of an inch on each side of the frame so that'll give me a half inch top and bottom so if this piece of glass is 18 inches um, wide and I need to set it in a quarter inch on each side, I need to cut my inner bevels at 17 and a half. And then if it's 24 inches long, minus half an inch, I need to cut it at 23 and a half. So that'll be the very innermost piece of those 45 degree angles. So I'll go ahead and set that saw up and do that. All right. so. When you're going to cut these, like I said a second ago, you're only going to have one chance on this nice expensive wood. So um, let me walk you through it. Uh, the angles or the bevel, you can use this as your guide, right? So we have that nice end router. I want to put the angle basically this way, right? And the other, if I cut that out, the other piece will shoot. Um, basically towards you, the camera. So pay attention. You're not going to cut these exactly the same every every time, right? You might have to flip it, turn around. Um, just be cognizant of what you're you're uh, doing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take off right at the edge. I'm going to trim it and use this as a reference. You don't want to take off too much. Um, and then what I'm going to do is. I set, uh, set up a little um, standoff block. I'll put the camera that way. So if I know I need to cut the innermost beveled angles, or 45 degrees, at 17 and a half after I trim that and I have an angle, I'm going to do a little 17 and a half. I'll pull it up, measure 17 and a half, and then I put a little standoff block here. Um, so I'll put it uh, to 17 and a half. And I'll flip it around where I need to, lock my fence down, and then as I cut it, it'll come off the standoff block, and I can cut the other 45 degree. You do not want to cut, I'll slide this one back, you do not want to use your fence and cut it through like this. It's very dangerous. What will happen is, um, <clears throat> as you're cutting, if pressure gets a certain way and you start to twist this piece of wood this way or this way, it's gonna catch on that blade and you're not gonna have room between this fence. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna fling and shoot back at you or your hand's gonna get sucked in because you kind of lose control of it. So never ever cross cut a piece of wood using 
the fence like this, okay? Bad idea. Always use a standoff block. Um, so when you come off, you're not touching anything and you're still cut. All right, so I will go ahead and cut this first piece down. Safety glasses and exhaust. You'll notice I left this in place, kind of pulled back on that board a little bit to get away from the blade, but I haven't made a zero clearance for these 45 degree cuts yet, and there's such a open gap right here in the throat plate. I don't want this to catch and fling back at me, so I have to stop, um, and it stops it from getting caught on the blade, so. All right, so I'll go ahead and trim that other piece. Having a nice blade, this is what you're going to be left with. Nice, clean cut. All the way around. You're not going to get a cut like that with a stock blade that comes with your contractor saw or a lower end one. And this wasn't very expensive at all. Alright, so I measured the inside I drew a little hash mark where I need to cut and the blade needs to angle and I then I set up I lined it up to my blade and I set my fence up to the standoff block so when I cut I'll have two repeatable cuts off of this piece and my next piece although it'll be exactly the same uh, exactly where I want it so that's how you're going to set it up and so I will Fire this up and cut these two pieces out. Alright, hopefully you guys can see it. And I will move the camera. Obviously I can't hold it perfect here, but... There we have it. After you cut all the miters, go ahead and do a final sanding on the inside of all four pieces. So at this point in the video, you should have the inside all finished. And what I did is I did not put any wipe on poly on any of these miters, miters and I've been super careful not to ding damage any of those angles because I want them to be nice and crisp. So what I did is I used two light coats of Wetco gloss wipe on poly and that was after I sanded to 220 grit and then uh, in between each of the wipe ons I did 320 with one of these sanding sponges after that last coat and it's been dry for 24 hours I got this decorative wax finish from Bear this is clear and I did two coats of wax <laughs> Let it dry for about 10 minutes, wiped it off. Um, so now it's super slick, perfect and nice. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the glass out, clean the glass and assemble this. Well, prior to final assembly on this, go ahead and test fit your glass and make sure everything's right before you put some glue. Um, so here I'm just adding glue to the miters, putting the glass in and then using this Bessie uh, strap clamp uh, in place and then I shoot a couple 23 gauge pin nails with my uh, Milwaukee M12 pin nailer and then go ahead and let that dry overnight. Once that box is dry go ahead and put some walnut colored putty in and give it a nice good sanding. For the backing I'm using a quarter inch sheet of plywood and then I'm taking two pieces of quarter inch uh, foam project board that the kids use you know at school to do projects and whatnot i'm gluing them together with spray adhesive and then here i'm just outlining uh, the dimensions of my backing and i will cut that out with the razor blade and i'll spray some more glue adhesive and i will glue this foam board to the quarter inch piece of plywood 
And then uh, I'm going to take a quarter inch off of the foam. You can see it in that shot. Um, so it recesses down into the shadow box. So here I'm measuring how much that foam is going to recess down towards the glass because I need to cut my angled uh, pieces where each of the flags are going to go and I need to take an account how much that foam is going to recess down. So that got me to an inch and a half so that's where I ripped those two angled pieces and I gave them each a 45 degree miter. So you might have a different size flag. I use three by five flags here. Um, so just fold your flags and measure what your pieces need to be. Um, so here I'm just dry fitting them, seeing where they need to be, making sure each one is going to be parallel to each other. And I roughed up those uh, inside pieces with some sandpaper so the glue has something better to stick on than uh, that poly and the wax, really, because that wax that glue will come right off the wax. So go ahead and glue these pieces in and just use some um, little hand clamps like I did to let them dry. And I do apologize, I forgot to mention you have to sand and finish those pieces before gluing them in. For the matting color, this is not a piece of fabric and in the color I wanted navy blue and I use some spray adhesive uh, and I spray down the foam and then I just work that uh, fabric onto the foam and you can keep picking it up and down to work the wrinkles out. So go ahead and get that nice and then trim off the excess. So for his name and unit plaque that'll be in the center of the shadow box, I wanted to do something a little special. So he is originally from Hawaii and we live here in Hawaii, and I had some local uh, native monkey pod uh, slab, a piece of slab in my garage. So I cut some stock down. I think I did three quarter by three quarter. I did that quarter inch rabbit like I showed you before, and I used a chamfer bit uh, to make that nice edge, as you see there. So I got that stock. I routed it, sanded it, all that good stuff, and then I'm going to going to use the same process to cut uh, six by, I'm sorry, four six inch pieces with uh, 45 degree miters. Uh, and I'm using super glue to uh, glue all those miters because it will just be a disaster if I use that uh, Bessie clamp on this little piece. Um, I wish I had some of that CA glue with the aerosol instant activator. This would have helped out uh, that much better, but hey, Still works pretty good. Um, so where I'm going to be doing the laser engraving, uh, the backing per se, I'm using some of this quarter inch uh, stock uh, mahogany. So it's a pretty light piece, but it matches and uh, pops pretty well. So there we have it. I'm going to sand this guy down really nice, and I'm going to take it over to my buddy RJ down the street. Good time, long time friend of mine, and he has Tang Bang Woodworks. Uh, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. But I gave him the list. I asked him if he can help me out. And he was uh, super happy to jump on this project and pitch in on this one. Um, so here we go. This thing is pretty cool. It's that X tool. It's just going to laser engrave all the writing. And it's super quick. It comes out super clean. And uh, I think you guys are going to like it. I gotta say, I like the RJ style sometimes. Just doesn't even unwrap the cord, straight to just sanding uh, some of those blemishes out of that piece, and straight to business. So I went and go. I went ahead and put it together. And then I'm just using some clear coat uh, spray uh, instead of a brush on this one, just because there's so many corners and it's so tiny. Um, but two coats of this, 320 sand in between. So here I have the backing out and I'm just laying out all the ribbons, the coins and flags that he wanted me to insert. With this shadow box, since it's foam, all you gotta do is push those uh, backings straight into the foam and they hold in place uh, really nice. So I use spray glucive to hold that plaque 
and I used double-sided tape to hold those coins. Something a little special, that bottom right coin, he said that's a piece of the teak wood from the decks of the USS Missouri. Um, and really great history on that one. I'll let you guys take a look and see why that's super important. But here it is. Um, I finished the outside um, edges and I did the same process. Two coats of wipe on poly followed by two coats of decorative wax and just a really nice finish. So it was truly an honor and a privilege to build this shadow box for Chief's 22 years of service in the United States Coast Guard. So thank you for your service, Chief. I appreciate it. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. It definitely helps this channel grow and uh, keeps me pumping these videos out to you. So we'll see you next time.